Hi everyone, my name is Jason Matthew. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do uh, basic troubleshooting on AP joining issues for Cisco wireless APs. I already had another video that shows uh, how to do the troubleshooting on WLC connectivity issues, but in this one, I want to concentrate on uh, AP joining issues. So I got multiple requests to uh, do a lot of troubleshooting uh, scenarios on AP joining site. So I thought of creating uh, some flow and uh, this is the flow that you can see uh, in the screen it's very small because it's covering a lot of a uh, lot of areas so uh, this is the one going to cover uh, one by one in the video so as you can see here you have uh, cable related issues poe related issues capi cap app related issues uh, and uh, multiple areas to cover so i will just uh, go into the other uh, mode that shows each and every item separately so that uh, you will get better better understanding on each item and you will be able to see what is uh, written on this if you are looking for this particular flow uh, i have uh, one linkedin article posted in my linkedin page that will provide you the link for uh, all the pdf format and the html format and uh, jpg format those are the three formats i uploaded into my uh, linkedin page so you can follow the uh, linkedin article to get that high, high resolution picture uh, if you are using html you have an option uh, that will allow you to uh, collapse this view and all those things so uh, the other two uh, models are like uh, one format is jpg another one is pdf so based on your requirement you can download the format uh, uh, into your system so uh, to give a better uh, view uh, in the video i'll use another way of uh, displaying this one but as you can uh, see here i have a lot of things to cover so i normally don't keep videos more than 15 to 20 minutes so i'll try to cover maximum points in my video uh, in each video and i will be splitting this one based on the length of that video so let's uh, get started first thing uh, in all the troubleshooting things you make sure you don't have any uh, in ap troubleshooting you don't have any physical damage and only on your uh, device uh, if you are doing um, shipping from uh, one location, one where, uh, warehouse to another uh, site location. So in that case, there, is, there are chances that your uh, devices are damaged. If you have any physical damage uh, during that uh, transfer from one site to another site, you, uh, you try to avoid that uh, in the implementation side to uh, avoid all that, that kind of issues. So DOS dead on arrival. So just make sure there is no physical damage on your hardware the ap hardware once the doa is uh, passed for that uh, hardware then next one we will talk about the connectivity issues the physical cable connectivity issues so uh, in the cable side uh, we uh, normally think all the cabling everything is uh, fine and we don't have any issues but we seen a lot of issues based on the cabling uh, on the physical side physical connectivity side so i just want to cover the basic steps on the cabling so that next time you will not face uh, or you will be able to identify these kind of issues in your network in physical connectivity cabling uh, is the uh, major item that we have to make sure so first thing is that cable is connected properly so you can uh, say that uh, you can feel that it's a silly thing but uh, most of the time you will see that okay the cable is connected but it's not properly inserted and there is no direct contact happen and you have some um, uh, high humidity areas you have some contact issues then you can use some contact cleaner for that so whenever you use rj45 cable there is a comp copper contact involved so you make sure that is connected in the right way the, the uh, next one is uh, length of that cable so that varies based on the cable that you are using so are you using a solid strand or the multi strand then based on that it will change the uh, total uh, length of that cable supporter on the connectivity side so uh, always we'll say 100 meter but uh, if you are using a different type of solid uh, strand cable then it will be only 90 meter so uh, hope uh, always you are keeping less than 90 uh, so that you don't have any issues on that and the next one is uh, i'm just uh, pointing out what are the uh, different cable types used now uh, and you have uh, in cat Cisco also you have multiple versions so uh, i'm not listing down everything but i want to just show you the uh, basic difference if you are using cat5 uh, you uh, you have some limitation of 100 mbps that negotiation 
for the newer APs on uh, Cisco, it's always uh, good to uh, use that 5e or above because you are going to get that 1 Gbps uh, limitation uh, on that. So, uh, in case of 3800 and 4800 series APs, you, you can support MGIG on those APs and you need uh, uh, 30 watt uh, for the PoE side. So, you make sure you have 5e or above. If it's 38, um, 3800 and 4800, you try to have um, the cabling done for CAT 6 or above. Because today or uh, in future, if you want to support MGIG on the Ethernet side of the AP, then this is the uh, only cable that can support uh, for uh, MGIG ports. So you uh, make sure you are selecting the right cable for the AP model and the right length of that cable. Uh, that will help you uh, in uh, next level uh, on the cabling side. Then uh, next one is uh, connection status. Check the cable uh, and... Um, uh, replace that if it's uh, if you found the cable faulty because always it's getting crimped um, so your uh, cabling team will be doing that effort uh, doing that activity so uh, there are uh, a number of chances to have a human error in the uh, cabling side so you try to uh, find that cable issues and replace uh, before you start any kind of uh, cabling uh, troubleshooting of AP joining issues. So that's the first thing you have to rule out. There is no cabling issues on your network. So uh, you can use uh, a Cisco switch. Uh, if you are using Cisco switches, then you have a cable diagnosis feature available. If uh, you are not using uh, Cisco uh, switches, then you have uh, you can ask your cabling guys to uh, use their cable tester and uh, do that kind of. Uh, uh, checking in background and make sure all the cables are uh, 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 cables are uh, fine in your network so a number of times we face the cabling issues out of 100 one or two will have this kind of issues so uh, always uh, don't start the troubleshooting at the end uh, you try to start the troubleshooting from the uh, starting phase itself the physical connectivity itself so you make sure the cable is correct for the ap then next one is uh, switch port status. You, when we talk about switch port uh, status, you make sure your speed, duplex type, uh, spanning tree protocol, error disabled state, all these things are checked. So speed should be negotiated based on your AP. It can be 100 Mbps, it can be 1 Gbps based on the AP and it can be MGIG also. But you make sure it's uh, it, that speed is negotiated as per the uh, standard on that AP. If there is something uh, something wrong in the speed negotiation, please make sure both the sides are configured for the right speed negotiation. And next one is a duplex. If you are uh, doing any duplex, uh, if you are seeing any difference in the duplex negotiation, you make sure your the switch port is your switch port is con uh, connected uh, in the proper way and configured in the proper way. Because whenever you have a cabling issue, that can also lead into a half duplex connectivity, and it will. Uh, directly impact your performance so you just make sure you are having right duplex setting on your uh, interface the type the port type uh, detected correctly on both the sides so if you are using sfp module on the switch side uh, for ap or something then you just make sure uh, these things are connected then spanning tree protocol uh, normally it will not come into picture on the ap connectivity but at any chances uh, if you have uh, uh, STP uh, that is blocking your port or uh, it's gone down before you connect the AP or something you make sure spanning tree is not blocking your port then uh, next one is error disabled state so it can go into error disabled stage because of multiple reasons but you make sure the AP connected port is not gone into error disabled so these are the uh, main stuffs uh, on the switch port status uh, then next one the switch port security if you are using any kind of security model on your switch port, you make sure that is matching the requirement. If you are using .1x, you make sure you are not connecting any factory default APs into that port. Because uh, factory default APs will not come with the .1x authentication. So, you have to always make sure at least this AP is connected and got the .1x configuration from the controller. So that it can do the negotiation from next time onwards. So, that is for uh, .1x enabled ports. So once you got the uh, once your AP got the dot uh, one X authentication credentials from uh, WLC, it will be able to do the negotiation. So always you keep factory default AP and already joined AP 
separately for the dot one authentication then uh, the credentials if you are seeing an authentication error or something that you have to do the troubleshooting on your radius server side so uh, the next one is the mac uh, uh, port security using the mac address so how are you allowing more than one mac if you are hard coding the mac address for the port so based on that you make sure your ap's are able to use that port for the communication so you should not go into an error disabled state saying that okay you you violate the uh, switch port security uh, configured on that switch so you make sure your switch port security part is taken care in the right manner the uh, then we will go to the next one that is uh, poe um, the poe is another thing we have to always uh, take care of it in the background because each ap uh, have different different requirements on the poe side so you have to make sure uh, each and every time you have to make sure this ap is able to get the required power from your switch side the first thing the switch power supply so how many number of ap's you are going to connect to the uh, switch uh, you will be having a switch that supports poe plus but it's completely depends on available poe um, on your uh, switch and what is the power supply you are using on this switch so when uh, when you talk about uh, power supply you can have uh, 720 uh, watt power supply 750 watt power supply or 1100 power supply so you have multiple options based on the switch uh, model it will keep changing but out of that uh, 710 or uh, 720 or 1100 uh, watt power supply there are some uh, a, a portion goes into the switch uh, switch hardware also so you are available power for poe will be lesser than that uh, actual power supply so you have to make sure you are not crossing that limit the latest model of ap's are going to take more than 30 watt so you have to uh, do that calculation how much power you are having or how you left in your uh, on your switch to support the ap so always try to keep that under 80 percentage that is always good to keep the 80 uh, under 80 percentage means it's not going to get overly util utilized or go into a uh, error state and go down the ap's will go down based on that so always try to keep the power usage the poe usage under 80 percentage of the available power so you have to make sure you have the right power supply you have to make sure you have right configuration on the switch board uh, and it's uh, allowing to do the negotiation and uh, providing the enough power based on the ap model then uh, at any cost try to try to uh, control that power requirement under 80 percentage then that will be uh, easy to manage in going forward then next one is the power injector if you are using power injector for the ap we see in this scenario multiple times people will uh, think that okay all the power injectors are same and it can support any ap's but again this power negotiation the power requirement of ap depends on the ap model so you have to make sure you are using the right power injector for the ap the power injector for uh, 12, uh, 2700 and 3700 will be same uh, the power supply for uh, 2700 and 3800 are different uh, the requirements are different so if you are uh, using the right power supply it can support both but if you are using the wrong one it will not support the uh, latest model APs. so you you make sure you are having the right power injector the next one is a poe or poe plus so if you are getting an ap that supports poe that means you can uh, give up to 15.4 watt then uh, whatever APs that can work with poe uh, the 802.af standard with 15.4 watt it's completely fine you can use that uh, for that uh, poe requirement but when we talk about poe plus the requirements changes so you make sure that your ap uh, are getting connected to a switch that is having a poe plus capabilities uh, for an example that 800 and 4800 you make sure it's connected to poe plus if you are thinking about connecting uh, 3800 or 4800 in your network so you make you choose the cable also based on that requirement you should have um, right uh, cabling model that can support more than 10, uh, 30 um, watt so you uh, do that then um, then next one is the cdp or lldp negotiation on the poe power negotiation so make sure 
you are supporting that on the uh, switch side to do that negotiation and provide the right uh, uh, right uh, power requirement on the uh, AP side. So let me uh, stop this one, uh, uh, this video here because it's already uh, crossed that uh, mark, the maximum mark I used to keep in my videos. As I said earlier, uh, you can find this uh, flow uh, in my LinkedIn page. So this is my LinkedIn uh, link for that. Then you have um, a shorter link that uh, directly point to the um, the article I posted in the LinkedIn so you can follow this link uh, for that article then uh, this is my uh, YouTube channel that is Cisco networking if you want to see the next videos on the same topic uh, you can go and um, subscribe this channel for uh, getting that notification so uh, I'm going to close this video here uh, we'll see in the uh, next video for the same troubleshooting continuation thank you for watching